So on Thursday night, Austin FC went to play against first year team Charlotte FC for the first time in club history. And what a good way to end the month of June, you guys, as Austin FC came out with a win as they beat the Queen City of Charlotte by the score of 1 0 by a beauty of a goal of your truly, Danny Cabral, Danny Pereira. And what a good way to come back after your suspension, you know? This was a really interesting game. Interesting and strange. Strange because of the lineup. We saw two players starting, Johan Romagna and Danny Hosen. Johan Romagna replaced Julio Cascante due to injury that Cascante suffered, and I thought Keller was gonna, was gonna start. But I guess Wolf wanted to give Romagna a chance and opportunity to see what he still got in him, and pairing up with the Norwegian Viking of your truly Gabriessen. Because we haven't seen Romagna since October of last year, but this performance Romagna gave, he, he looked lost and looked confused. But I guess that's what happens after a year of not starting and that you have competition with both Gabriel and, and Cascante and Keller as well. But his performance was okay-ish, I guess, but it, su it sucked the most that he came out injured. So hopefully he has a speedy recovery and hopefully he comes back all, you know, full health. Hosen starting in number nine role was really interesting as you know Max Ruti was suffered back spasms and this was a way to show to see if Hosen could be a proper number nine as Uruti has been kind of lacking scoring goals but I guess that's what happens when you have you know competition with Hosen and Jita but Hosen this was not a good game for Jose, in my opinion. He had so many chances at a goal that he missed those opportunities in the first half. So I would say that Hosen is much more of a substitution player rather than the starting number nine. And that's just on me, you guys, because I thought GT was going to start too. But GT came on in the second half and replaced Hosen. And GT had a good game. He It wasn't the same performance as he like he did against FC Dallas, but this was okay-ish, I guess, for GT. Overall, this game was really interesting. First half was boring. I would say the only good part about the first half was Nick Lima was lucky because apparently his hand ball wasn't called. First of all, the ball touched his chest, then his arm, and it was outside the box. So I guess you could say it was a hand ball or it wasn't. I don't know. The angle was really difficult. The second half comes in. We saw three substitutions. One of them was yours truly, Danny Cabral, Danny Pereira. After missing out the FC Dallas game due to a suspension that he got from the Club Football Montreal game. First shot on target, you guys, he scored a beautiful goal. Ship's kiss. As Danny Cabral scored that goal outside the box, making it the second Austin FC you know, goal outside the box. And my God, I was left speechless. And after that goal Pereira scored, I was confident that Austin MC was going to win. I would say too that when Austin MC got the first goal, they should have made a second goal and feel, you know, calm about it. Because Charlotte, Charlotte FC just went at it. They were trying to get the goal. You know, they were fighting for that draw or a win at least. But our two dynamic dual defenses of Keller and Gabrielson did a great job. Good performances from them and especially Stu. So I would say the trio of Keller, Gabrielson, and Stu were the reason why Austin MC got the win because of their great performances in the defense. But call me crazy, but did I see Ronnie Redis replacing Triusi? I mean, first of all, what was Owen... Yeah, what was Josh Wolf thinking about that? Because I tweeted out saying this, Driussi is Amazon and Ronnie Reds is a Wish product. Both of them aren't the same and one of them is not gonna come out great and the other is. So it's not gonna be the same thing. But I guess Ronnie had some decent moments, I guess. He just ran the field with the ball, but you know, it's Ronnie Reds. We don't see him anymore. He's always just, you know, collecting cash rather than doing something in the field, you know? But it's just me. But overall, this was a really good game. Really ugly win, but all games can be pretty. And Austin FC came out victor victorious as they beat another Eastern Conference team. So Charlotte FC is number five for Austin FC in this 2022 MLS season. As they, they have five wins and one draw against Eastern Conference teams. And this means Austin FC have now won their fifth game on the road. So it's now five wins, one draw, and two losses on the road. So if you know, you know. Five, one, two, you guys. And this month was a good improvement to what it was to May, as May was so shitty, you guys. 
But I guess we could say this is a second undefeated month for Austin FC, even though it's only three games. But I hope better future and a better month of July as we have important games coming up. First of all, against Colorado Rapids, Atlanta United, and Houston Dynamo. But let's see what happens for the month of July. And since Austin FC have now come out second place in the now we're in the halfway mark of the 2022 MLS season as Austin FC have now got 31 points and second place. Last year, Austin FC ended their year with 31 points. And like I said right now, Austin FC is in second place with 31 points, you guys. So think about that. What a great improvement this team is having. And Wolf Ball, I would say Wolf Finn, you guys. But yeah, you guys, that's my reaction to this Austin FC win against Charlotte FC. I hope you guys understood everything that meant. But I'll be back here probably with a Colorado Rapids reaction video or preview. But for the meantime, you guys, stay hydrated. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.